So far, we've only created objects using literal notation. So this is literal notation. You create a variable, give it a name, and then you put in properties with values for each of those properties in there, and that's your object. But there is another way to do this. So let's go through that other way right now. We'll just create a function, call it restaurant. Then we're gonna add in some parameters. Name, seats, and food should do well, just like the other ones. We'll do this.name equals name, this.seats equals seats, and this.food equals food. All right, so I just wanna point out really quickly um, that name references this, seats references this, food references this. Um, these are not the exact same thing. Um, this is actually uh, variables that we're going to be uh, calling later on uh, in a second when we actually create our objects. So the very next thing is to create our restaurant objects. So we can just do var OSHA. We're gonna call them the same exact thing, by the way. A new restaurant, do OSHA tie, we better capitalize it. Tie, 55, go with tie. And we can create the next ones as well. Do 20 and sushi. Let's do the next one and we'll go with soror equals restaurant. Do soror. 40, we'll do Indian. All right, so what are we doing here? What are we creating? Well, we have this prototype, basically, this, this initial creation of restaurant that we actually plug in the values to to create these objects. So whenever we say new restaurant, we're actually creating this whole new object essentially and we're going to be entering in our values which match up to these which are then plugged in to be variables or properties the same ones that are in our original objects using literal notation and we can actually test this out real quick with just a let's do document dot write we'll do OSHA dot name so it's gonna call OSHA and then dot name references this. Then the name references the input, and the input was Oshitai. So we're going to see Oshitai on our browser. Refresh, there it is. Go back. We can do the same exact thing for any other property that we created. So we can do soror dot seats. I'll save it. Go back, and there we see 40. All right, so why would we actually do this? Well, the reason is if you actually have a lot of elements being created on the fly using JavaScript and you have objects connected to those elements and things like that, and you wanna, let's say, have a gallery of an e-commerce gallery of you know hundreds, maybe even thousands, or possibly millions of items like eBay or Amazon have, well, you can't actually enter it all by hand. That would take way too long. So it's much better to have a constructor that you use that predefines your objects. It already has predefined values as well. So all you have to do to create it now is just write one quick line of code instead of having to type out five lines of code. It's simply a way to make things a lot faster. There's a lot more benefits to doing it as well. You could also push in changes to this constructor object uh, really easily instead of you know with this one you'd have to go one by one but if you wanted to add something in like a new one you could actually add it in later on in your code to create a whole different parameter and a whole different property that would be included for this function.